Hey team, Rachel here, and I wanted to come to you for our new coach, um, baby coach training part, uh, day one, I guess. Um, so this is going to kind of be an as needed training series that I'm going to put together for our new coaches, um, our baby coaches who may be struggling um, with things that I specifically want to address and help with. So today's topic is um, the price struggle. So when I posted in the team page this week, you guys mentioned that the price tends to be the biggest sticking point for you um, with signing up people or whether they decide to say yes. Um, a lot of this is a skill that you'll have to learn in time, um, but I do have some pointers that I want to share with you in hopes of helping guide you in the right direction and maybe perfecting your skill of conversation. Truly, when it comes to a price objection, there's only a couple reasons people say no. One, it's a fear issue. It's almost always a fear issue. They don't believe that they're capable of reaching their goals and therefore they're not willing to invest any money because they don't believe that they can make it work. And so as it's our job as a coach to kind of combat that from a place of experience. Um, two, the thing that they don't see the value in the product or the services that you're offering as a coach, um, they can purchase this online anywhere. You know, they could go on Amazon. They could go possibly order, you know, bootleg copies of Insanity off Craigslist. But what they're missing is a coach. And so it's our job to share with them the value of having a support system. The third thing is that the conversation could have been navigated a little bit better. That's a skill that takes time to learn, something that I still feel like I'm actively um, adjusting as I'm going along in my coaching business. Um, so that's a skill that you will learn in time. And you're gonna, I can look back on, I can think of several conversations that I had in the very beginning of my business. And I look back and I'm like, oh, I pulled the trigger. <laughs> I talked way too early about the financial piece of the puzzle without really getting an understanding of their goals. Um, and so that back and forth piece of the puzzle is really important in order to successfully navigate a conversation. Um, so one of the things that one of you had mentioned is how did how do you divert them from only asking about the price? When you're having someone's interested, they reached out to you, they saw your transformation picture, they're impressed, they've been watching you, and they want information. The first thing that they say is how much does it cost? And that's a normal you know, objection that we get, that's, that's normal. People want to know before they even get into it, whether it's um, something that they can even afford or not. Well, I'm so sorry. When I'm recording this video, I'm seven and a half months pregnant. And so, and it's seven, 12 at night. So I am like, struggle busting it. But I actually look presentable today, so I wanted to make sure to record a video. Um, so how to divert them from only asking about the price. So when you're having this conversation and someone, you know, you give them a little blurb about what a challenge group is or what you can offer them as a coach and you say, um, basically it's an online support community where you work out from home, you follow a portion control nutrition plan, and I support you every step of the way. Would you like to learn more? They say, yes, how much does it cost? That's something that we hear a lot and something that's very normal. And you, what I usually say is I would love to go over pricing details. Um, what I have learned as a coach is that this journey is not one size fits all. And so I can't just blanket quote pricing for you because I want to make sure that I'm creating a plan that's specific to your needs. Sorry about that that's specific to your needs and make sure I'm not over recommending or under recommending something that might not be beneficial to you. Do you mind if I ask you some questions so that I can hand pick and create a program for you and we will work together to see what is the most affordable option that you have. And usually they're going to be like, yeah, sure. That's fine. Um, some people might ask, is there a ballpark? In that case, if they go right back to the price right away, I would say, sure, it ranges in price anywhere from um, $100 to $160. And that can come with um, as much as 30 meals or no meals, but it just depends on what you're looking for. And so that usually will allow you to continue the conversation. Um, with that, 
there are some things that you can do when someone says no because of price. So they may say, you know, you've gone through this whole conversation. So at this point, you've already discussed their goals, you've discussed their struggles, you've discussed their concerns, you've discussed their nutrition, you what kind of workouts do they like, you've gone through all of that. Um, and a tip, just as a side note, when you're having those back and forth conversations, always relate it back to you when you respond. So if someone says, um, you ask them, well, what's your biggest nutrition struggle? What do you struggle with the most? And they'll say, well, I really struggle with portion sizes. I just can't stop eating. And I really love sweets. I have, I love chocolate. I have a big sweet tooth, especially after dinner. And you can say, well, you know, relate it to your story specifically. But for me, I would respond with, girl, I totally feel you. I struggle with those same things when I started my journey. I'm excited to share with you, you know, when we wrap, well, don't say that. I'm excited to share with you about the portion control system that I use because it keeps me from feeling deprived um, and helps me know what to eat throughout the day and have some guidance. Um, I also have found a really great tool to fix that sweet tooth and I can't wait to share that with you. But before we do that, will you tell me a little bit about what type of fitness you enjoy? You continue the conversation. So every time they respond, you're giving some value back and explaining why what you have to offer is good for their specific needs. Um, now, when I go over the price with someone, there's two ways to do it, or two ways I recommend. Obviously, as coaches, we're going to recommend the challenge pack. That's the no-brainer. That's the goal. Um, not only from a like that's the big that's the the best financial option. You think about a DVD set. If you're spending eighty dollars on a DVD set and you're not getting psychology, you're you may or may not be getting support, or you can spend one hundred and sixty dollars on get every program we've ever made with Beachbody on demand and psychology and the containers and be fully set up for a whole year. It's a no brainer. So as a coach, we should not be recommending anything other than a Beachbody On Demand All Access Challenge Pack. From a financial standpoint, there is no greater value. Um, so when I go over the pricing with someone, there's two ways that I do it. So depending on where I'm at, depending on how crazy my toddler is or how crazy my life is that day, or if I'm as tired as I am right now, I probably don't want to voice message someone and be yawning the whole time. <laughs> so there's three ways that I go about this. Um, two that I've been doing for a while and one I just started implementing. So number one, in the files page, uh, the files of the team page, there's a phenomenal breakdown that says annual all access challenge pack verbiage or something like that. And I have created a way for you to customize every piece of the challenge pack to your specific customer's needs. So what I mean by that is when someone's you're going to explain the breakdown of the fitness. So it, it breaks down the fitness, the nutrition, the shakeology, and you as a coach. You're going to break down each one of those sections. And at the end of that paragraph, it says, I like this. Not only do you get insert program here, um, which let's say size, not only do you get size, which is the dance program that we discussed, you get Blah, 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 and explains the rest of it. So you can customize that. There's the next piece. It talks about portion control. At the end of it, it says, I like this for you because it allows you to relate it back. You want them to emotionally connect to the price and what the value is if you expect them to say yes. So they have to relate it back to their journey, not just reading off some bullet points on what they're getting. Um, and so it goes, breaks down it that way. So that's one way to send it over via text. I also love doing it via voice message. So particularly with Facebook, you can send voice memos. Um, you know, obviously you want to sound happy, like you're excited to work with them. I like doing that because they hear, one, they hear my voice, have a real person. I'm not just trying to sell them something. Two, they can hear how I think this is a good fit for them. So I'll say, you know what, Sandy? I am so excited about this. I think I have the perfect plan in mind. So here's what it is. 
you're going to get Beachbody On Demand for a full year. I know that we've talked about 21 Day Fix and Pio, and you weren't really sure which one you were leaning towards. But the really cool thing about Beachbody On Demand is that you can pick any program. So you can do both without having any kind of extra fees. You get everything for a full year. And then I, I break down every section of what they get. Um, that's the biggest piece of advice I have is break down every section of what you're getting in the challenge pack that you're suggesting. Um, and so I love doing voice memos because, I mean, it might take two or three 60-second voice memos to get all the information across. Um, and so that's how I really prefer. Now, that said, I have just started doing um, videos, <laughs> which might seem a little weird, and I don't do them for every person, but I'm finding that that connects with people emotionally so much more. Plus I've implemented the a form that they have to fill out. So I actually skip all of that conversation. I skip that whole back and forth. I don't recommend doing that as a new coach. You need to learn to navigate conversations. Um, but as a more seasoned coach who's been around longer, I don't want to lose that personal touch that a form takes away. And so by sending a video, I'm literally breaking down the price, but they can see my face. They can hear my excitement in my voice. And it just connects them to the journey that much sooner. So those are the three ways that I would send over the pricing information. Um, so what do you do now when someone says no? When they say, ah, you know what, it sounds great, but I just don't have the money for it right now. We've got my car's all busted down and, you know, my cat's vet, vet bill and just, you know, what people say. So here's a couple things that I do. You as a coach have to be the one to make the judgment call and when to stop pushing someone. We're not here to shove it down their throat. A lot of times we know that it's an excuse um, because let's get real. Nobody really has, most people don't have $160 just laying around, but most of the time it's a fear of failing. And so you have to help them overcome this hurdle. So questions that I will ask and, and someone will say, you know what? Sounds great. But the time is just not right. Let's, can we do it next month? Um, after I pay off this bill and I'll be like, yeah, you know, what? that totally sounds okay. Can I ask you a quick question? I forgot to ask this earlier. Do you actually eat out at all? Like in your normal day to day week, do you, how many times a week do you eat out? And they might say, well, it's a struggle. I eat out usually four times a week and, and I usually in, you know, I might go get coffee a couple of days a week and things like that. And I said, my response to that would be, you know what? I am so the same way. You used feel felt found. I remember feeling the same way. I found, blah, blah, um, feel, felt, I remember feeling that I felt the same way I have found. <laughs> That's how it goes. And I will relate it back to my story and say, you know what? I ate out every single day, sometimes twice a day when I started my journey. And when I went to purchase this challenge pack, I realized that I was going to have to make a choice and I was going to have to choose the drive through or it's going to have to choose changing my life and realizing that it wasn't an either or that it was a, I'm just swapping. It's the same price point. I'm just swapping them for a healthier alternative. Um, so I talk about that. I ask them if they go to go to Starbucks because um, that's a huge money drainer because I used to do that. Um, and I also explain with them and I say, well, can you talk to me about your food budget? Do you have a set budget every week that you stick to for your family? Do you are do you have you know kind of a goal that you work to keep your your food intake under first the month etc most people will say yes you know i work to spend a hundred dollars a week well with that information if you break down the challenge pack and break down shakeology you can show them that they're probably spending you know and then you would ask well what do you typically eat for breakfast then if you you know if you're not eating out and you're eating at home and you're spending X amount per week tell me what your normal breakfast looks like and they'll say well I might have a bowl of cereal and then I'll ask them I say, well, when do you get hungry do you get hungry really fast after that yeah usually within an hour I'll have um, some pretzels you know whatever it may be and then do you have to put those pieces together and show them Oh, that dollar and a half on cereal and that dollar on pretzels and a soda from, or $3 on pretzels and a soda from the vending machine, that together 
would have given me the price of my shake that day. And so showing them that it is in their budget, they just have to accommodate it. Um, the last thing I do is I'll ask them, you know, and I, I will say to them, I'll say, I'm not looking to push you. I have no desire to put your family under financial stress, but I, based off our conversation, you reached out to me because you are ready to make a change. You are struggling and I have been where you've been and it's a miserable place to be. Relate it back to you emotionally. And say, I know that this leap is scary and I know that making an investment like this is scary. Will you trust me for 30 days to see if this is what you've been missing and if I can help you in the next 30 days? Sometimes I'll say yes. Sometimes I'll say no. Um, now, a tidbit, I don't usually bring up the 30-day money-back guarantee. Um, Coaches have different philosophies on this. For me, I feel like it degrades the value of the challenge pack, you know, because I don't want somebody going into this thinking that, oh, if it doesn't work, I can just get my money back because then they're really not going to give the full effort in the challenge anyways. Um, and I also feel like it devalues what we're offering. And it's like, well, if it does, it it creates that shadow of a doubt in them. It makes them think, oh, well, maybe it won't work. I want them going into this knowing that I'm going to give my all to supporting them to making sure that they reach their goals. And so I really don't recommend it. I do pull it out occasionally. If I have someone that just really is, just needs this and I know this will help and we have been talking for a while. And I'll say, you know, there is I haven't brought this up yet, but there is a 30 day money back promise. I have full confidence. This is going to work for you. And I've never had anybody return their package, but the best case scenario is you, it's everything that you're looking for and more and you get the results that you want. You feel better. And then 30 days you're looking back and you're like, man, I'm so proud of that decision. Worst case scenario, you get every ounce of your money back. So what is there to lose? Are you ready to get started today? Um, and so that has helped in certain conversations. Like I said, I don't pull that out very often, but that's a personal opinion. You can do whatever you feel is appropriate and every conversation is going to be different. So I'm going to wrap this up with a couple tips. Um, number one, the main, one of the main reasons that people don't see the value in the package is that we as coaches are not doing a good job of sharing that value on our social media. Um, so let's relate it back to my pregnancy. I have done, I've been really intentional about showing the value of Beachbody On Demand. I don't call it Beachbody On Demand on my page. I call it Online Fitness Program Library. But I've been really intentional about showing them that during my pregnancy, I might not feel up to doing my scheduled workout, but there's so much variety at my fingertips that I could easily press play on a 10 minute back pain routine instead of doing a cardio workout because I needed to listen to my body, but I didn't have to buy anything new. Um, also same thing with Shakeology, educating your followers on what it is and why it is that you love it so much. Um, sharing your journey on your page relentlessly and making it, it goes back to one of the, for those of you that are new, it's the, called the four vital behaviors, but one of the vital behaviors is being proof of the product. And so if you're, it's kind of a harsh, um, and it's not really totally applicable to new coaches, but you know, you'll approach this at some point. If you are not seeing results in your own journey and you've stalled out for more than a month, you lose trust from your audience. Now, this does not relate when you've hit maintenance um, because you can talk about that differently. But I can specifically look at seasons of my journey and know that I was a slacker during XYZ seasons. And so my success behind the scenes was a lot harder to achieve because um, my own journey was suffering. I wasn't eating right. You know, I might still have been working out because that's never been the issue. It's been eating right. And so I wasn't eating right. They were not seeing results. I wasn't putting out a new transformation every 30 days. But when I committed to a program and I saw results and I shared those results, that's when my my trust was built with my audience. So if you're being a slacker in your journey, you're going to have a hard time with people trusting you. People aren't going to trust someone who hasn't had a new transformation. If you're not in maintenance phase, let me be clear on that. If you're not in maintenance phase, if you haven't had a new transformation in 
two months, three months, six months, however long, they're not going to, they're going to devalue what you have to offer. So that's why we are the number one priority in our, in our business. Like we have to take care of us and then we work on our business, but it starts with us. Um, so the next tip is if someone says no or not now, always put them on your follow-up list. You'll never know when they're going to say yes. And it just might be a timing thing and they truly might not have the money. Um, and emotionally they just may not be ready to commit. I cannot tell you the number of people who have said, thank you for not giving up on me when it took them a year to get started coaches on this team actually. <laughs> and they were so worth it, but I never gave up on them. I continued to, you know, just be a friend to them, encourage them, reach out to them, follow up with them, continue to invite them. And I think end of the conversation at when you're talking about price and they say no and it's a firm no and you're not willing to push it anymore I would ask them the question um I totally respect your decision I have no desire to push you um may I put you on my on my list of VIPs to fill you in if there's ever a sale on the program that we talked about or to let you know about future opportunities to join our community. They're not going to say no. They all, I've never had anyone say no. Um, and so they'll say yes. Then that, then the next time you follow up with them, it's not salesy. It's not awkward. It's not weird. It's natural because you have asked their permission to do so. And it also shows that you're a bit, you're a professional because you followed up with them like you said you would. Um, so let me see what else. Um, the last thing, okay. Don't take it personally. This is probably the hardest thing to do is to not take your no's or objections personally. This is something that I still struggle with. If I feel like someone is a perfect fit for this community and they're just leading me on and they're just struggling to get them to commit because they're so afraid. I have to put myself in their shoes and remember there was a period of time where that was me. And so I have to show, always show kindness and grace and know that it's not about you as a coach. And at the end of the day, it's not about a sale either. Um, you know, the, your intentions are going to be evident. If your intention is to get a sale and that's the only reason why you want to help somebody, they're going to feel that. And so you're not going to get a sale because they're, they're going to feel your intentions and not your heart. And so don't take it personally when someone says no, know that it's not about you. It's about them and their personal battles and their inner struggles. And maybe their life just isn't where it can be. But if you continue to stay consistent on your page and you continue to build that relationship in three months, six months, a year, it will pay off. Um, so the only thing that stands in between you and another coach on our team or me is time. You know, you might be a new coach and you don't have a long follow-up list to follow up with, but in time you will. And these no's that you're hearing or these not right now's will turn into yeses if you stay consistent. So those are my tips on how to overcome the price objection with your potential challengers. Do you have any other questions? Put them in the comments of the video below and I will reach out to you or um, answer them directly. All right. Thanks guys.